He is one of a handful of named orcs in Tolkien's books. While serving as one of the chief villains of Peter Jackson's Hobbit trilogy, the real story of his life and death is quite different. Today on Nerd of the Rings, we cover the life of Azog. Since we don't know the typical lifespan of orcs, we don't know how old Azog was when he enters into the greater story of Middle-earth. Should orcs be capable of living for hundreds of years, he could have been with the orcs sent to Moria by Sauron in 2480, when the Dark Lord is making his re-emergence in Dol Guldur. Either way, he lives in Moria for many years and grows to a position of power among the orcs. He is described as a great orc chieftain and would be known among his enemies for hundreds of years. By 2790, the dwarves of Erebor have been exiled from their home for 20 years, and King Thror longs to recolonize the lost realm of Khazad Dûm. He travels from the dwarven settlement near Dunland to Moria, and as he arrives from the east, the gate is open. Nar begged him to beware, but he took no heed of him and walked proudly in as an heir that returns, but he did not come back. Nar stayed nearby for many days in hiding. One day he heard a loud shout and a body was flung out on the steps. Fearing that it was Thror, he began to creep near. Then Nar came up and found that it was indeed the body of Thror, but the head was severed and lay face downwards. As he knelt there, he heard orc laughter in the shadows, and the voice said, If beggars will not wait at the door, but sneak in to try thieving, this is what we will do to them. If any of your people poke their foul beards in here again, they will fare the same. Go and tell them so. But if his family wish to know who is now king here, the name is written on his face. I wrote it. I killed him. I am the master. Then Nar turned the head and saw branded on the brow in dwarf runes so that he could read it, the name Azog. That name was branded in the hearts of all the dwarves afterwards. Nar stooped to take the head, but the voice of Azog said, Drop it! Be off! Here's your fee, beggar beard. A small bag struck him. It held a few coins of little worth. Enraged by the death of their king, the dwarves muster an army, not just of Durin's folk, but we are told that each of the seven houses of the dwarves took part in the resulting War of the Dwarves and Orcs. This nine-year war takes place primarily underground from Gundabad in the north to Moria in the south. After nearly a decade of hunting Azog and seeking vengeance, the dwarves come face to face with the Orcs of Moria in the climactic Battle of Azanabuzar. This battle is fought before the very east gates of Moria where Thor's body had been flung all those years ago. In the battle, Azog and his orcs face the royal line of Durin's folk. King Thrain II and his son Thorin are present, as are the king's cousin, Nain, and his son, Dain. Coming late and fresh to the field, the mailed warriors of Nain, Gror's son, drove through the orcs to the very threshold of Moria crying, Azog, Azog, as they hewed down with their great mattocks all who stood in their way. Then Nain stood before the gate and cried with a great voice, Azog, if you are in, come out, or is it the play in the valley too tough? Thereupon Azog came forth, and he was a great orc, with a huge iron-clad head and yet agile and strong. With him came many like him, the fighters of the guard. And as they engaged Nine's company, he turned to Nine and said, What? 
yet another beggar at my doors. Must I brand you too? With that, he rushed at Nine, and they fought. But Nine was half blind with rage, and also very weary with battle, whereas Azog was fresh and fell and full of guile. Soon Nine made a great stroke with all his strength that remained, but Azog darted aside and kicked Nine's leg so that the mattock splintered on the stone where he had stood, but Nine stumbled forward. Then Azog, with a swift swing, hewed his neck. His mail collar withstood the edge, but so heavy was the blow that Nine's neck was broken and he fell. Then Azog laughed, and he lifted up his head to let forth a great yell of triumph, but the cry died in his throat, for he saw that all his host in the valley was in a rout, and the dwarves went this way and that, slaying as they would, and those that could escape from them were flying south, shrieking as they ran. And hard by, all the soldiers of his guard lay dead, he turned and fled back towards the gate. Up the steps after him leaped a dwarf with a red axe. It was Dine Ironfoot, Nine's son. Right before the doors, he caught Azog, and there he slew him and hewed off his head. Though being an incredibly young dwarf for battle at just 32 years old, Dine slays the mighty orc chieftain, the dwarves place Azog's head on a stake and shove into its mouth the same coin-filled purse that he had thrown to Nar after killing their king. Azog's wretched line would live on in his son, Bolg. Though the war of the dwarves and orcs would greatly reduce their numbers, Bolg would lead those who had followed his father for nearly the next 150 years. He would come to meet his end in the Battle of Five Armies in 2941, in a battle fought once again by Thorin and Dine. Now this is obviously vastly different than the version of Azog we got in the Hobbit trilogy. There he is referred to as the Pale Orc and nicknamed the Defiler. These are original to the films, though I believe the Defiler title to certainly be one that fits his personality in the books. Him being a pale orc is also an original design choice for the films. In the books, we really only get the description of Azog as having a huge ironclad head and being both agile and strong when he's described in the appendices. Personally, while I appreciate the effort to have a villain with a direct connection to Thorin for the films, I much prefer the version of Azog who falls to Dine Ironfoot and ends up with his own coin purse shoved into his severed head. Which version of the Azog story do you prefer? And let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more videos on characters changed or created for their cinematic adaptations. As always, I want to say a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters who make this channel possible. Tom DeBombadil19, Listen Me the Cinda, Mandu Pandu, Andrew Carlyle, The Mighty Mim, Sky Carcass, Slide Belts, Dane Ragnarsson, Salim Rahman, Zetrock, Berto Berg, Grand Strategy Nerd, Graham Derricott, The Dark Haired One, Wyland, Michael Wu, and Debbie. If you enjoyed the artwork in this video, check out the artists in the description and purchase prints of their great work for yourself. Thanks so much for watching and subscribing, and we'll see you next time on Nerd of the Rings.